Hey everybody and welcome to another segment of Blind Date. On today's episode, I'm talking with Yambo. He has an amazing agency that does 3D work and you may have known him because we've did two projects together. So you might have seen his work on one of my case studies. On this episode, we're talking about how he runs a remote agency that works with between 150, usually around between 20 to 150 other artists around the world, how he's running that operation while creating high-end, amazing work for awesome clients. It's a great conversation. The, the shot of our conversation is a bit dark, but you're probably not here for the beautiful visual, but for this most interesting conversation, enjoy it. Great, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. <laughs> thanks for coming by. Yeah, thanks, th for, for, thanks for welcoming me in this most amazing studio workplace uh, I've ever seen. Thank you, my, my pleasure. It, uh, it's really beautiful. Yeah, we wanted to do it for a while and then finally we're doing it, so I'm, yeah, I'm very we, happy. Yeah, we got to work on two projects together yeah. already, but this is the first time actually sitting, not on a Skype call, like face-to-face -face drinking coffee together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Having a real conversation. <laughs> I'm used to it, you know. I'm all the time working with people that, that I can see their face a little bit, but... But yeah, that's uh, that's funny because we're really close to each other. You know, Tel Aviv is, is really small, and uh, yeah, it's amazing that we got to do this. Yeah. So, yeah, we will talk about how you built your your studio with with remote people around the world, which is amazingly high producing high quality work. Thank and this, you. this is really the first thing that I want to dive into. Like, how did you get so good at what you're doing? Oh. Like, I I don't know if, if, if I'm that good, you know. You but, are that good, dude. <laughs> Thank you, but, like, but, but you know, I think one of the things that helped that is, is that I had the opportunity to work with really talented people and it's kind of evolved, you know. I, I was working with some specific 3D tools and I didn't find any people around this area that working with those tools. And, and this led me to just trying to find people that working with those tools and, and, and eventually, um, working with really talented people. Um, you mean in sense of collaboration or? Yes, yes. It started like very small. I, I, I reached a few people trying to, to get some help on a few projects. I, I was needed help and and uh, eventually it, it ended up growing really fast because because uh, last year there was many, many fun spots that, that, uh, that came by, Xiaomi, the Oppo and Vivo. And each project uh, the client uh, wanted to produce something bigger and bigger. And I just tried to reach new people and, and, and all, all, all the things that happened last year was that, that things really grow fastly. And, so and, you feel and like last year was really like yeah. everything explodes? Yeah, I think last year there was... But like, you've like, been around for a while now, right? How, how long have you been doing this as kind of like Yambo Studio? Um, this is the, the, the four, fourth year. Okay, fourth year. Yeah, this is the fourth year, yeah. What were you doing before? Uh, before I was working in some different studios and, and places in Tel Aviv. Like uh, in-house? Yeah. Also yeah. as a street artist? Or? Yeah. The, the, last, uh, the last place I was working uh, in was uh, Prometheus, which yeah. is a, a company that's doing uh, branding for, for all the yeah. t TV. Actually, I, I just interviewed Nitsan from And The More, you know, yeah. he also yeah, talked yeah, about yeah. Prometheus. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We actually just switched. Nitsan, Nitsan just left Prometheus and I, I was started working there. Okay. And uh, at the beginning, I was just, just the motion design and doing after effects and, and design stuff and then not focused uh, primarily on 3d or? At, at the first year no uh, okay. but on the second year I, I, I tried to do more 3d stuff there and they was kind to uh, to give me the opportunity to do it and now I, I was in, in the same room with two very talented 3d artists uh, um, Yaniv Gorali and uh, Ilan Cohen which are very experienced. Yaniv is, is a Houdini master and, and I learned from him a lot, of, a lot about workflow and process and, and Ilan is, is also a very experienced art, artist. So this, this was a great 
great school for me in terms of like in 3D and then like a also what were you doing there like big TV commercials yeah openers, yeah TV or? branding uh, uh, openers for, for, for TV shows uh, uh, at some point some some UI and, and, and stuff for Red Bull that we did that was like 3D but but uh, like uh, like uh, real time graphics and, and okay. stuff like that cool. so, so a variety of, a variety of stuff but at the end of the day it was it was 3D oriented and 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 most of the time was I was working in Cinema 4D and different render engines, and eventually I discovered like Octane Render and and and, and decided that Cinema 4D is my software and and I try to focus everything I do in Cinema 4D and 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 this is what led me to to develop this like global globally oriented workflow which which we produce work that I'm I'm sitting here and all the artists are you think that's related places. to the software and the workflow this what what's led me to to do it because it all started from a problem my problem was that I didn't have the tools and uh, sorry I didn't have the, and the people that working with my tools so I, I right, the people in Prometheus did not work with cinema 4d or no, and, and and but the main thing is the is the render engine. Okay. Yeah, I I switch from from V-Ray to to GPU render engine, which which is Octane render, render, and and because I was working with those tools, I didn't find any other people that working mm. with those tools. So this was the trigger. But okay. but today I, I'm I'm working with 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 other softwares and other render engines. So this was kind of the trigger that led me to do it, but not actually the reason. Um, but but uh, so why did you leave there, or how long were you stay before you decided? To I was I was working there for three years, okay. three, three and a half, I think. Yeah, three and a half. And uh, I, I was always wanted to do kind of my art, and and it, it was all, always something that was uh, I was I had a big passion for it, and and I just decided that it's time to to try my own way. Okay. And, uh, so you just and, quit? Yeah, yeah, I just quit. I I started to. Uh, I freelance again after after a long time I didn't freelance for a while. Did you have clients? Like, were, was it scary no, to quit no. your job? Yeah, at the beginning I didn't have um, okay. much clients, but but I, I just started slowly. I I, I had some connections from from the people you know Tel Aviv is a small city and and the motion design industry is not big. So I had few friends and and I told them that I started freelance and we started to do some stuff together. Um, do you remember yeah. your first project? Like, oh, that's our <laughs> <question>. <laughs> when you, <laughs> you quit your job, now what's your first project? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I just can't remember. <laughs> All right. I, I, I remember some small gigs, some, some like, uh, because I was, I was doing a lot of TV stuff and, and branding stuff uh, for TV, so there was a couple of projects uh, that was related to, to like uh, TV brandings for some Israeli channels. So I remember those was some of the first jobs. Um, and I think for me, the, the, the first time that I, that I felt like things exploded a little bit was, was that things are, I came like from abroad, some, some, some... When clients came from abroad? Yeah, yes. So, so, How did your clients abroad heard, heard about you? So for me, it was always trying to, to put a portfolio that is really, really good and, and hopefully people will see it and would like to get similar stuff for their their business on, and, on and your own work or on like Instagram drip like uh, where do you share your work at the beginning it was mostly like my website and uh, but how did people come there like how would people uh, discover your website I think at the beginning it was a lot of like uh, Facebook groups and and, okay. and, and and the Facebook page and just uh, at, the, at, the, at the very beginning just sending emails to to different different students that I was wanted to work with and, and I was kind of presenting what, what what I do and what we do as a collaborative studio hmm. um, and, and 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 can we talk about that That's really interesting. You reached out to like studios like 3D studios or general agencies that you like their work? Or? Yeah, it was at the very, the very early beginning, but mm -hmm. 3D studios, uh, I think just presenting ourselves and, and say, hey, this is what we do. Um, and immediately you decided to like call it Yambo Studio, not just be... No, like, it, it, was, it was Yambo for a while. Yeah. And, and, and after I, I realized that I'm not doing stuff by myself and uh, the fact that it's not like a... Uh, an actual physical space with a lot of uh, employees 
but it worked the same way, just just uh, with with a globally distributed workflow. Um, I, I realized that it's a studio, but but just a studio in a different perspective on, on maybe how studio looks in in, in yeah. our in, in this year or in, in this time. How did that happen? That you started to work with. So you said you reached out to people because there were not a lot of people who understood the same yeah. software. Yeah. But how did you start hiring them? Or yeah. So so at, so at the beginning, um, uh, there was there was one small project with with a good friend and a talented dude called Jeff Bryant from Canada, and we did uh, there was a commercial we did for some jackpot casino thing, um, and and I just hired him and told him, hey, how much do you think uh, it 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 would cost to to take you for ten days of production? I think this should be enough to to, to cover all all what you, what, what uh, we should do, and 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 we did it together, and it was very successful, and and the client was very happy, and I realized that he re- he really helped me, and then on the next project, I I he told me about another friend of his, and 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 we took him, and then I discovered another good friend today called Marius Becker from Germany and we did uh, the opening title sequence for the Mossad uh, together so I just gave him the scenes that we did here I did it with, with Tal Baltuch and uh, and we kind of directed it all over here and then I gave Marius the scenes and t- tell him, told him maybe you can detail the scene in terms of like 3D detailing and lighting and, and I saw that it all was uh, and, sorry and, and I saw that it also was very successful and then I took Jeff and Marius together <laughs> and, and Ezekiel from, from Drummer it, it just every project we just took more people based on this like uh, small community of, of 3D artists. But each and one of those people has a different skill or yeah, something yeah, definitely, that you, definitely. you hire them for something specific? Yeah, definitely. So t- today I'm, I'm kind of trying to, to build uh, the team based on the job needs. So if, for example, we have we, had, we got a job with liquid simulations and uh, environment that, that needs some some a lot of lighting skills and, and product shots. So I will take some, so Jeff is really good in product shots and animation and uh, and Marius is really good on environments and lighting and, and, and shading and, um, and and Ezekiel is really good in simulations so I'm cr- kind of trying to build this team with 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 the skills that, that are, are are right for for, for the, the, the current job mm-hmm. um, and 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 sometimes I just bring people along the way so so we see that uh, we don't have all the power that we need so so we have like a, a very um, a very big t- t- Slack channel today, w- which got like uh, almost uh, 150 3D artists. Wow. Yeah. So, so those are just people that I didn't work with all of them, but I, I work with most of them. And those that was like successful collaboration, they just stay on Slack and we got different channels for, for, for different stuff. Some of them just Houdini, Cinema 4D, uh, technical. What is Houdini, general. by the way? I just Houdini no is, is just, is it's just a, a more advanced 3D software, okay. uh, which is very powerful and, and, uh, and, and you can do a lot of advanced stuff with it. Cool. So, so we got like all these technical channel, we, we all did, did 3D geeks that, that love all, all this uh, technical side of things and also the, the, the design uh, side of things. And we're just trying to, to create things together. And, and we got Ronnie, uh, which is my wife, uh, we, and she helped with all the production side of things in the studio. Um, and I am managing all the stuff in terms of the, the client. And but also you still do like creative work, Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. It's, it's, I, I'm, I'm kind of trying to keep it like 50% uh, okay. creative work and 50% production work. And sometimes when, when there are more b- complex projects, I'm hiring a, a producer that will do all the production side with mm. the client. Okay. So, so it's it's always the balance between the creative work and and and, and all the production side, which I love the production side as well because it, it it's it's also something that that I love doing. So, so yeah, I think I love this balance between between the technical stuff and then the creative stuff. Awesome. I want to talk a little bit about process. So, as as I mentioned, we did like two projects yeah. together already, but I feel like. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like every time that we work together, I came kind of like last minute, like, I don't have a lot of budgets, let's try to do this. And we, we, we were really stressing out to make sure that we fit and that everything works. And I wonder, does that how every project looks like? Or that when you're working with a big, I don't know, yeah. like mobile, d- d- cell phone, whatever, they have a huge budget and you can have time for research. Yeah. How, does, how does that process usually looks like? Yes, so so I think there there is definitely 
two types of work. There are those type of works which are not bad, but are, are more like improvisation is needed in those type of works because um, it, it's not it's not the actual process that I'm used to. Okay, because, so what because, is the because actual, the actual process? process that I'm used to is is is. Uh, is first of all trying to understand what's the time uh, given by the client because if you have like three weeks I can't do a lot of uh, in this time because what's I, the timeline I, for yeah so so, so ideally all the the, the the phone spots which are a great example was between a, a month with, and uh, to two to two months okay so something like Four that to eight weeks yeah. then okay. and, and the process goes like that so at the, at the beginning um, at, at the very beginning I'm booking the team uh, based on the job needs and the and the, and the early but how can brief, you know but, before maybe yeah, yeah. When, when a client comes to you, they already have a script. They already no. So, so the, usually those those phone companies comes with uh, some references, okay. so, some keywords, okay. um, the phone itself, and uh, and 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 just some early Skype conversation. They trying to to explain to me what they want to to sell with this new phone. Um, so I, I'm first of all just to have the people I'm booking the the the, the, the initial early team. Just and by the way, in people. this case, you work directly with the client, yeah. with the phone maker. In this case, yeah. not with a creative agency. That, not with no, with okay. an agency. Um, from my experience, working with the clients directly are are much more easier because mm -hmm. I can really communicate with them, right. and, and you, you know how it is. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, it could course. be working with agencies could be a big headache, and and sometimes you have a good relationship with the agency as well. But but uh, ideally, I would really prefer to work with the client themselves. Mm -hmm. So we, if we have the opportunity, it's it's okay. Uh, yeah. So first, you have an initial call, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and then the, the first thing that the client sees is the treatment. The treatment is like a, a document, a PDF, uh, 10 to 20, 30, maybe 40 pages, just explaining our initial ideas of executions, uh, of execution, execution, sorry, uh, references, um, putting different ideas on paper, just trying to, uh, to put everything we have in mind uh, to the client, and then the That's client- That's before the script? Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Script. Usually, uh, I tend to, to to avoid working with script and storyboard. Okay. Um, because I, I I found that that working with with ideas and, and putting ideas on paper and then translating them into into motion clips um, is much more creative or, or beneficial okay. for, for our workflow. So, okay. so so we're putting this this early treatment. The client said what he like, what he don't like. Sometimes we give few options for different ideas. And and then we, we go in into a few few rounds of treatments. This is you do this after you like send the proposal or yeah, get everything. Yeah, after after the job is is, is signed and, okay. and yeah yeah I, I I tend to not do treatments before uh, the the job is is approved. Okay. Because people like to to get treatments and and and, and I, I found myself doing a lot of treatments not getting paid for it and and I okay. decided that, that uh, I can can't keep doing it anymore. Okay. Um. So, so after the treatment is approved and the client. So, but, so sorry, I'm cutting yeah, you yeah. off, but it's it's just super interesting. So how do you usually price the project if you don't know exactly what's involved? Based on the artist and and, and the booking period. So if, for example, I know that okay. the, the client gave me like a month of production. That, and that will be the budget. Um, yeah, one month of a work. month of production um, with a team of, uh, let's say, uh, eight people. So I'm just taking the daily rate of the people and and um, and uh, multiply by, by, by the, the actual right. artist. And I, I'm building the, the quotation for the artist based on it. And, and you and you add your management fee or yeah how does yeah, that work? yeah 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 okay. exactly just 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 my if if I'm I'm, I'm working as an artist on on this job so so my my uh, like uh, daily rate and and if not so I'm just taking the, the production fees okay um, and then after if then if if, if the client uh, say hey it's it's too high for us let's try to reduce it so I'm just cutting the, the team members trying to produce something with a smaller team. Um, and maybe with, with a shorter period, uh, the client might understand that it might lead to uh, to uh, to less uh, rounds of revisions for him because, uh, or maybe less capacity because the team is smaller. But we're trying to find this balance with the client um, and then approve everything. Then we show in the treatments, doing a couple of, of rounds. It, it might take a week or two. Uh, the treatment stage includes some R and D. So. While I'm, I'm writing the treatment with with some one team member, so for example, I'm doing a lot of treat treatments with, with Marius, um, which is which is the the shading and lighting artist, and also 
we have like like a great uh, communication and, and creative process. So so let's say me and Mario is doing the treatment this week, and the team is doing a lot of R and D, and and we're putting those R and Ds and clipping in the treatment. When you say R and D, it's just like experiments. Yeah, and yeah, very to... random, yeah. very no limitation. Just trying to explore different ideas. Mm -hmm. With the, if, if it's a phone, so with the phone or, or with the different features that the client want to and show. And this is just like style frames? It's not, or it includes animation already? It, it could be, it really depends. Sometimes, usually it's style frame because the client would like to see at a very early stage how it will look like. Yeah. But if it related to some concept that the animation is really crucial to show something that the client, it's important for the client, so we're doing some, okay. some motion so tests. First process, first step is the treatment. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Once the treatment is overall approved, we might get some uh, rejections, but stuff that that we might uh, pay more attention on. We go into the to the previs pre 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 visualization. So the previs, okay. and in the previs, what I'm actually doing is sitting here with Premiere. Um, all the artists um, are just generating clips based on the treatments. So if if it's a fun spot and we have like um, one feature which is the full screen display and one feature which is the the great battery and blah blah blah. Uh, so each artist based on on what we agreed on on the beginning of the day is working on a different section or a different clip, and I'm getting all the the tests from them and just putting it together in Premiere. All the process is going all the time with the sound with the sound design and music. So so okay. so I got uh, two amazing uh, dudes from uh, London called Luke and Liam, uh, which are doing all this music and sound design for everything Luke we're doing. Luke and Liam as well. Luke and Liam. Ah, and Liam. Yeah, and Liam, Liam as yeah. well. Okay. Um, Luke and Liam in London. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And they're doing like all the sound design and. Uh, and, and 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 music from from the first day that I'm, I'm freelancing. Cool. Um, and the, we got really good communication. So what's the process with that? Yeah. How do, do they work fact first? Do they get to see yeah. your premiere? So, so so with the treatment, we usually show the client few music option. I'm, I'm asking Luke to gather some references. Okay. Uh, and and the client is choosing uh, his preferred style of music, and it's actually really helping me understand where this job goes because the music can really guide mm, that's how, how things will look like so the client will choose music and and, and, and all the music is always kind of custom made it's yeah, not, yeah you, yeah, you don't always. buy stock music no never never never, like never. That. okay yeah so sometimes in some small small project we, we, we buy the client don't have a budget and yeah obviously we do it but on 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 the stuff on the that we stuff, that yeah. we yeah, proud doing so. Yeah, we, we get some references f f uh, from Luke. The client choose something, and then I'm I'm sitting in Premiere at the first day with uh, with the re with the reference from the client, and then after a few days, Luke is working on the first draft that will that include the music from the client and maybe some um, intro and outro and, and and some section that he edit that that might be relevant based on our vision, and I'm just try starting to put the edit together. Uh, very randomly at the beginning, just putting all the ideas, and and then it's it's it's. Uh, so you're always the one on, that sees the whole thing and, and rearranges. Yeah, it and yeah, kind of like the master director of the whole. Thing. Yeah, kind yeah. of, kind of directing it all, and then and then we spend around a week or a week, a week and a half, and sometimes a bit more, just with the previsualization and 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 getting all these ideas together and have this structure. Um, Does everybody on the team get to see what the other people are doing? Yeah, so so we're using Frame.io, um, which what? Which one? Frame IO. Frame IO. Yeah, it's no, it's, it's no a really idea. amazing service. You okay. should check it out. Frame IO. It, yeah, okay. so so what Frame IO is? It's it's uh, it's like a online service with, which you can open a new project and upload the videos online. Oh, and it's you can, video collaboration. Yeah, yeah cool. and you can comment on the videos and, and, mm. uh, and mark specific sections mm. and all the team uh, could comment on, on the same page and see uh, and, and have a discussion on, on specific frames. So if we have like a man, one minute of, uh, of a video, we can upload it and then just uh, based on the time, we're putting specific comments on, on cool. different sections and just mark things. And hey, we can maybe change this lighting here, and maybe we can put the sunlight over here, and uh, maybe we can rotate the camera, and blah blah blah. Um, yeah, and and then every day we're putting like a different version. Uh, actually, do you show the client at that that phase or no? We sh we present it to the client at the beginning um, a, a, a time frame of, of all the time that we will present uh, like uh, the, the different steps. So, so what, are, what are the milestones for the client? Yeah, so, so the milestones will be like uh, two or three treatment presentations. 
then after the, the third one the treatment is, is approved then usually three or four previous pre visualization previous uh, treat, um, uh, sorry uh, uh, presentations um, and then sometimes there is like style from presentation in between and the, the presentations do you just send it over on email or do you, do you literally present it depends to them? Depends on the how, client. It depends on the client. Mean? If we got like a good understanding, I'm just sending it over and, uh, and, and sometimes it works really smooth. If I feel like there is a need to, to explain things and, and so, so we're just doing like... Because I know from working with you that in the beginning it takes a lot of imagination in terms of how this is going to end up. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, it, it, I, I think it's, it's one of the things that... that, that I think that we should really improve ourselves because um, one of the one of the biggest challenges is to communicate what you have in mind to the client in in in, in efficient way, uh, and sometimes even when you put everything super clear on paper, people just don't read it as you as you imagine it, and 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 maybe just scroll on on section that was important. So if if those are new clients, um, we're trying to to to, to put like very clear treatments and then doing just a session to explain everything. Um, and, and there is always a lot of visual include. So, so I, I, I always hope that the visuals will, will catch their attention and, and they will say, hey, we, we really like it. Let's, let's uh, take it and push it further. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, about the muscles, we have like uh, two or three treatments uh, presentations, then few previous and staff presentations. And at, then at the end, we have like um, work in progress renders, which is uh, the actual uh, animation plus the, the style frame. So, so this should reflect the client how the, the job will actually look like at the end. It, it's before the compositing and the final color corrections and all, and, and maybe some uh, title animation and stuff, but it should reflect the, the client uh, how it will, will look eventually. So we have like around seven or eight total presentation to the client. And usually it's enough to uh, to meet their, their vision. Yeah. Um, and 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 yeah, in terms of workflow, workflow, we we doing this like I, I'm in front of the edit till the edit is locked, and we know which section it, um, it will be will be in every place. And then after everything is uh, is locked in place, each one of the team member is working on specific sections. So I could work on one scene, just working on the lighting, and then I, I could I could tell Marius, hey Marius, we, we just uh, I just finished working on on S20. Maybe you can pick it up and try to see if we can put a sofa on the side and blah blah blah. And 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 then we we spent like around two 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 weeks or three weeks if we have if we have. Uh, plenty of time in this job, just refining the detailing and, and, and making all the transition work really smooth. So, so for example, John- So is that, do you have like a Dropbox or something that you, you share the same file so he can pick it up where you are? Or? Yes, so, so talking about workflow for, for a bit. So yeah. all the files are um, always on Dropbox. So we got Dropbox business and, um, and this is works perfectly for us. Every time we finish a job, a job we're just putting online and, and um, removing the. And the every from. every every partner does the rendering on his own location and only no, transfer. No, or? I, I got here like, like all the stuff. Yeah, this yeah, yeah. before like all the all the. So GPUs. you're the only one who does the rendering, or you do? Usually, the if if we need help, sometimes uh, Sebastian who builds those machine putting for me like another seven GPUs. In, yeah, in let's Poland. talk about this. I don't think people on like yeah. on the podcast don't know, but I will show this on the YouTube. Like you <laughs> built a crazy machine here that's custom made. Yes. Like, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, percent? yeah. So, so uh, a wonderful guy called Sebastian Michalski from Poland uh, built those machine. Um, at the beginning, I was just told you before that I was I was seeking for people that working with G GPU rendering and, and my software and stuff. And another problem was that I needed a, a very strong machine that will be able to, to render things very fast. And with GPU, GPUs is as many GPUs you got uh, as, 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 uh, as fast the render is. Um, so, so I just reached him one day. I, I saw him on some on some Facebook group, the Octon Render Facebook group. I told him that uh, before that you were working with a computer that what you bought at the store, just like yeah, a normal yeah, computer. just just a simple yeah. one GPU that is like a GTX that that is good yeah. for those renderings. By stuff. the way, 3D artists cannot work with Mac. Everybody is like a custom built PC or um, Mac is more problematic for for 3D artists. Even usually. that huge kind of a Mac Pro spaceship type of thing. 
Yeah, some people will argue with me and, and, and they found a way to work with this. But for me, I, I was working w with Mac stations before I was really into 3D. Uh -huh. But then I realized that, 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 that it's true art and, and, and I just can't manage to do all the okay. technical stuff. So I, I just switched to PC. I, I think at the end of the day, it's more, it's more easy to, to just adjust yeah. uh, to the new, new, new softwares and, and hardware and, and stuff. So, so yeah. Um, so you reached out to Sebastian. Yeah, so I reached Sebastian and I told him my story shortly and he told me, no problem, let's, let's build the machine and uh, send it over. And he built for me the first machine with just uh, two GPUs. He sent it to Israel. Um, By the way, why do you need to build it in Poland and send it over? I just didn't find anyone in Israel that, that know what is GPU rendering back in the days. Like I'm, I'm talking about. You can't Spotify. give a computer store like a spec. I need this and this and this, and they will. Build I didn't it know what the spec. Oh, uh, yeah. so he helped you spec yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, okay. he helped spec it out, and also the the, the water cooling stuff. Um, he told me that, that it should be very very low temperature, so it will render. And I didn't know anything about it. Uh, it's so back crazy. Then. I don't even know. Yeah. like water so, cooling. It sounds like something for a Google server yeah. farm <laughs> yeah. type of thing. Yeah. So, so we sent me the first machine. It, it works amazingly. It was two GPUs, and then I bought another machine for him with four GPU. And th then this machine arrived, and uh, it was broke on the way because UPS didn't handle it uh, properly. <laughs> Um, Thank you, so, UPS. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we did a Skype session um, and he just told me, okay, you need to t just t see everything uh, in front of you and just take it apart to, to all the small parts and we'll do it together. So I just took a screw and just uh, took all the parts and, and it was a very scary night, but eventually the machine, uh, the machine Work. worked at, at the end. So I, I, I understood a bit more about the what's going inside inside there so i, I was i was kind of happy uh, and then last year we, I, I was because all the this phone madness uh, i was needed, needed a lot of uh, horsepower um so so i bought from him another like a uh, seven gpu machine which is this big machine that you saw gpu is like the gpu is just it's the, the, video the motherboard card. Ah, it's just a it, video card yeah it's a video so basically card. it's a, a it's normal a, it's computer with seven video cards in it yeah and water cooler because it gets yes. hot. so because uh, when you render for hours yeah like a normal motherboard got only three or four slots for video cards okay uh, and like a server motherboard's got like uh, up to 11. So you, this uh, so, is actually so, so a server motherboard? Yeah, it's motherboard. a server motherboard okay. with uh, two, two CPUs. Okay. Uh, seven uh, cards, a lot of uh, memory and SSD and all, all the stuff in between. Craziness. And then like water cooling that, that will keep all the cards in low temps because all of them stacked together could get really hot and mm. uh, it's not good for rendering or mining Crazy. or whatever. How much does a box like this cost? It's like it's like it's uh, super expensive. Uh, let's say in dollars. Let me think. Uh, around fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, it's maybe maybe a bit a bit more. Yeah, mm -hmm. around eighteen, I think. Yeah, yeah okay. something like that. It depends on the GPUs and yeah. and, and, and but yeah, something like that. Um, and yeah, it it it. it uh, it works great. And another friend of mine, uh, Ronen Tanhum, bought from Sebastian the uh, same machine as well. Um, and and uh, Sebastian shipped today so many machines to, to so many artists around the globe. Um, so I'm, I'm super really, really cool. happy, happy for him. And, and yeah, it's, uh, it, it's so let's, really let's talk about your team. Like, how do you, you said you have 150 people on your Yeah, on, on, like... on the Slack. But, huh. but in terms of actual people, I'm, um, working with and coming back to work with I think it's around 20 pe 20 people okay and um, so this this would I would this say like the core, the core team. team yeah I would say the core team and where but are they based you like yeah so, so I will just mention the people that I think we did uh, more than let's say six jobs together so Marius Becker is from Germany Jonathan Lindgren is from uh, London actually from Sweden originally but but from London uh, Ezekiel Grand is from uh, Argentina Jeff Bryant is from Canada um, uh, then thinking 
Yeah, I'm trying to figure out all the people <laughs> and, and thinking. And you got oh, in oh, touch with them. Like, how did you meet them or, or build a relationship with them on the Facebook groups, on like the, the communities? Or? So, so at the beginning, it was like random emails and stuff. And then we opened the Slack channel of, of, the, of the studio and then it's all going inside the Slack channel. So every time people reaching out or I'm seeing people that, that kind of, I think our work is kind of got like a similar alliance. I'm just inviting them to the Slack channels and, ch and this is why we have like more than 100 people there. Okay. Because I'm just, when I see people that got like potential to work together, I just ask, tell them about uh, the studio, sending them the website and tell them if they want to join, this is the link and, and some people join and, and, and keep and active. And then the and link, you kind of, you use the Slack to recruit people for certain jobs. Yeah. You're like, who's available next yeah, week for Yeah, blah, definitely. Blah. So, yeah. So, so, so the Slack is mostly today, also to talk about different stuff, we got like different channels and stuff, but also if I got like a job and need to book people, I, I'm, I'm not going to, to search online and, and, and search in different places, places because it will just waste a lot of time. So I'm just putting, a, 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 sometimes if I know which team I, I, I want exactly, I'm, I'm just reaching the people directly and sometimes I'm just telling it in the job channel, hey guys, and I, we got a new job, this is the, the treatment, their treatment. Um, who's available? Maybe maybe we can we can book some time together, and then I guess. Do you some have do, do you manage that somehow, like in a spreadsheet with everybody's how how much they charge their daily rate? I, and I like did it. I did it. I did it. Uh, I got so, so many much? stuff like that. <laughs> okay. But at the end of the day, I I think it's it after a month or a two or, or or more, it's become irrelevant because the the daily rate of people is changing and and the, and. The, um, and the requirement for like, a job is did changing. you had a good experience with that person what did it deliver it was it late like because i imagine yes, so, so so i got this like 20 people i thought told you like five and there is yeah. and the manager and there is dave and there is like this around 20 people that 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 we got like a good relationship so every time i'm trying to to book time with them because we got a very good yeah, okay. communication so you got like but, the validated team and then and, and, other people and always i'm trying to take like two or three people which are new okay uh, to the team just to have like to, to find new new, new good collaborations yeah. and, and 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 usually Usually in each job that we take, there is like one or two people that we really don't have any good communication or, or, or just a good collaboration at all. And they're amazing, amazingly talented artists, but this kind of, of mindset of, of, of staying all day in Slack and, and sharing stuff in progress, not all the people are used to. You know, there are many amazing artists that just used to work all day and send the stuff at the end of the day and they just don't keep the communication mm. i'm trying to reach them in, at the, in the middle of the day and saying hey maybe we will change the plan and let's try this and and some people don't adapt to this yeah. and it's okay you know it, it's 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 fine and and this is why we have a variety of, of people and i'm just trying to find the people that we have a good relationship hopefully they would like to work with me and i would like to work with them and I'm, I'm trying to, to, to pay people like very, very fast. Um, usually, you know, we get money from our client and not, not immediately, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying all the Let's time. Let's talk to about that. You know what? Because, you know, we worked again two times together and every time that we work together, I hope it's okay that I'm, we're talking about That's money. That's fine. And, I, I, and, and you did this also <laughs> for me. I, you, you just paid me just one day after we finished the job. And I think it, it keeps the, the, the people you work with really with, right, with a good but feeling. I want to give you feedback. Like for the two times, first of all, two times that we worked together, we can't, we, I don't think that we like really had a contract or anything. Yeah. It was more like on the phone, like, yeah, let's because, do it. okay. Yeah. Because we're friends, yeah. or, you know, but, but then again, you also, you like, you didn't ask me for a down payment. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like we were, and, and I totally agree with you. I try to pay the people that I work with like same day and, and something. But for me, it was weird because like, I didn't know if you have to pay the other people that you work with or because I always try to get like my clients to pay, I don't know, at least 50% up front. Yeah, same. Just, just because if, if I have to pay you or I have to pay somebody else, I, I want to have, same. I don't want to lose money on this project. Um, so how do you usually work? Do you usually okay. do down payment or? So, so if it's like a first time clients and I don't know them, 
So everything is working like based on the plan. So we have like all, all the contract and all the stuff and, and, and 50% uh, before, okay. like, yeah. similar to, to, to what you presented. But if it's, it's a friend, I, I believe that people might disagree with it, but I never had a, 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 like a, a bad experience yeah. with, with a friend. So I'm trying to, to keep things normal and, 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 and don't go crazy with, with a lot of paperwork if it's yeah. not needed at, at the beginning. But it's just case like we had and like I had with some other friends that got serious in, in Tel Aviv. But if, if we're dealing with a client and, and, and everything should be professional based on, 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 on the plan, so everything is working like, like the paperwork. But, but, but sometimes I'm, I'm just I'm just. But with your normal clients, like, what are the? Do you have milestones? So it was is just. It's fifty like percent before. And fifty percent at the at, end. At the end, yeah. Upon yeah. delivery, like yeah. Only when they approve everything. Only when or... they're approved and happy, they, they pay the, the 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 rest. I actually never had a bad experience with money and the clients. Okay. I had few minor ones, but at, at the end of the, they paid me. So. Uh, what I happens hope. if they ask for extra iterations or whatever? So, so, so for me, I'm, I'm trying to always include this extra in, in the initial when budget. The project, yeah. So, so when they ask for more, they get it and, and they feel happy because they know they ask more and, yeah. and, and I, I took it into consideration at the beginning. Uh, but sometimes when it's going too crazy, I'm just trying to explain things and, yeah. and, and, and usually they know that this is like, we agreed on, on 10 steps and this is like the 20 steps. So obviously something is wrong here. Mm -hmm. and, and, and sometimes if I see that things are going really bad, I'm just leaving the money and, and just... Did you have no. an experience where everything went like yeah, bad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without I, saying client yeah, name, like, I, I, but, but... I won't say the client name. No, of course, but, but, but can you share what, what went wrong, for example? So the process that, that I'm just telling you about is not something that people are used to, especially not in the industry in Israel. Mm. Um, and, and sometimes their expectation didn't met what I was providing. So the work might be, um, might look nice for, 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 for my judgment, but they really wanted to do like a meeting every week. And uh, each meeting went really wrong in terms of how things evolved in, 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 in the dynamic conversation between the people. And I just felt like it not going in the right direction and, and things are not looking good at all. And uh, before it, it was like uh, the big capacity of work. I just told them, hey guys, sorry, it's just not working out. I, I, I won't ask for any money because I'm just living at the middle and it's not professional. But I got, I got to choose, I got to just what my next two months would look like. And, and if we would keep it like that, it would just not. I, I think that it's another interesting topic because I, I feel that the stuff that you, you will do and you will create will be the stuff that will bring you more work. So, so what I was doing in the beginning is just building a strong portfolio with a lot of stuff that are not uh, actual client work, maybe just some random explorations. And, and right now I'm just doing like a new branding for the new website and stuff that I, I feel that will be like very beautiful stuff that hopefully will bring similar, similar uh, like, like uh, work. Um, and, 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 and if I would do those kind of jobs when I don't love at all, like the visual, the visuals at all, it will it will bring more crap like that. So so uh, so I'm always trying to 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 keep control on, on what we're doing. And if you, if we are producing stuff that are not that beautiful, I'm trying to to, to stop and, and and understand what is not not right. So now you have amazing clients, and as you say, from from all around the world. What was there any transition moment from working between like? project with your friends or community here in Israel to when big clients started? Because you have really incredible yeah. clients. Yeah, yeah. I, I think one of the mo moments that, that, uh, that things, things has changed was there is an amazing uh, Chinese uh, motion designer called Somai. Uh, and Somai was doing the most beautiful fun, fun spots uh, online like uh, in 2017. Um, and and I was by himself, just like a single person. Yeah, yeah, really? he's, he's, wow. he's a really crazy. I got I got no words to describe <laughs> him, but he's really really okay. amazing in, in terms okay. of everything. 
Um, Send me the link so we can put his link. Yeah, I yeah, never saw his yeah, yeah, I okay. will. And um, one day you just reach me and say, hey, I got tons of fun spots <laughs> and I cannot produce everything. And I, 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 maybe you can help me out. And we did like a small things together, oh, a wow. small, small thing for Xiaomi together. And it was working really great. And the client was super happy. And we and did. You, you worked with him or yeah, directly yeah, with yeah, the client? He, yeah, he, he was like. He the, managed the client. The, yeah, the. 3D coordinator or, or yeah. just the, he just show all this stuff to the client and Xiaomi was very happy and we did eventually I think like uh, seven or eight spots in wow. uh, last year yeah. uh, and all those for, uh, spots and for Xiaomi. How did, he, how did he know about you? Again it's I think the online portfolio and, and just uh, keep it it's a small communication in terms of of the actual 3D people, at least it, 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 at least it used to be. Yeah. I think now it's bigger and I found myself seeing a lot of new people I, I never saw, which are really amazing. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying to catch up all the time. Um, so you but, think your big break was just from another actually 3D artist sharing their work with you? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so some I, and, and we both were, were happy. Some I was happy, the client was happy because uh, they, 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 they get stuff in, in the level they hope to get from Somai and, and, and then Xiaomi brought like a new stuff because uh, Oppo, which is another phone company in China, which is very big there and people don't know where over here, I, I guess, uh, saw it and, and they reached and, and wanted stuff as so well. So they reached directly to you this yeah, time? I yeah, I asked someone if it's cool because he's working with yeah. Oppo a lot and, we did, okay. and he told me he got, he got no problem and, 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 then, and then Vivo and, and then different agencies from clients wanted so, sorry, the different agencies from China wanted some, some other stuff. Mm. So, so there was like a lot. And Do Chinese still... clients know how to pay? <laughs> so <laughs> Chinese clients, uh, for me, splits into agencies and the client themselves. Okay. So the clients themselves usually got like a whole department to deal with studios like myself or ourselves. And, and they, they treat us amazingly. They, they know that we are a small studio and, 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 and the communication is, is working really well and, and also the production side of things. Do they speak English well enough for communication and stuff? Yeah, yeah it's, right. it's, I, I'm only asking this, I no, don't know no. if it's racistly, just I never work with clients from China, yeah, yeah. so I have no clue. Yeah, the, I'm really intrigued about this market. Yes, so, so there are really awesome, pretty awesome stuff. So, so first of all, WeChat is like um, the, the platform that yeah. they use. Uh, the Slack for China. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the WhatsApp, the, the Slack, WhatsApp, yeah. yeah. Uh, and there is a, a really awesome feature when you can just uh, click on, on the text that they sent you and just tra translate it like okay. on the app. So sometimes I just talk to them in English, they answer in Chinese and I just translate and understand on, uh, on wow. the go, which is amazing, you know. It sounds just, like the future. Yeah, yes, yeah, so, <laughs> ex exactly, it is amazing. Um, so, so I'm trying to, to be very responsive and communicative for them. So I'm telling them, hey guys, I'm using WeChat. Uh, so if you want me, uh, you can reach me on WeChat. And, um, and, and I'm trying to be very like uh, responsive in terms of uh, everything, you know, the, the, the communication, the, the, the document we send, uh, uh, the platforms. So for example, they cannot use Google Drive because right. they, they, yes, so there are yeah. some certain stuff that I need to adjust myself and I have no problem to doing it. Uh, but same as all, all around the globe, the work with the agencies is much more hard and, and I had like some few bad experience with the agencies, but working with the clients themselves, like all the phone companies and, and this year there was like a, some new companies of new work that we will share soon, um, that was also with the client themselves. So I found this, this kind of works ideal both for them and for, and for myself because we can really communi communicate with them and, and just trying to produce a good work together because the agency sometimes just block stuff that might be like a very mm. very uh, with a good potential yeah uh, yeah cool yeah so you mentioned now that like there is more and more people doing 3d i know like personally just from like Instagram that I see a bunch of a, a, lo a lot of new people doing yeah. like fancy stuff on Instagram do you feel like there is more competition that it's harder to explain how you're different yeah I feel like there is there is a much like a higher competition today I'm not sure what I think about like a 
I'm not doing anything to uh, to, to compete better, or, or, or I'm just trying to to still put like a very strong portfolio online. This is always what I'm aiming for, and hopefully this just will bring um, the good stuff, like 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 clients that that will want those type of work. So sometimes it's harder, and and some I feel like some today there is like a lot of people that are doing work in at least in, in the quality of stuff that we are doing. Um, I'm not sure if it's bo- if it's good or if it's bad, um, but yes, I feel like this industry really do, grows. Do clients sometimes ask you? I don't know if they approach multiple studios or people like, "How are you different from other people?" Or they? Ne- yeah. So, so, so one of the things that uh, that uh, I realized that will help just explain th- things better to the client is just putting a few presentation that answering a lot of the client okay. questions. So, so we got few documents. That covering the the, the team uh, people where they're like located. It's like a PDF type of thing. Or? Yeah, yeah, okay. it's, it's a PDF and also like a, it, it's 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 based on Google Slides. Okay. So so there is an online ver- version with motion and clips and stuff, and there is a PDF with okay. all, everything is static. Uh, it depends on uh, for in China you cannot share like uh, like those stuff, so you need to share the PDF. Um, and by the way, you can say, ah, you, you're not working on Apple because you Keynote has yeah. like the same thing as Google Drive. I, I know, I know. It's just not, not working with... Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I get a MacBook, but I'm just moving from, from, from yeah, the yeah, Mac today. It's, it's, it's too hard. Yeah. But anyway, I, I'm just trying to, to put a lot of... So if a new client reach, I don't need to write him like a long email or, or warning, don't, don't need to answer a lot of questions. We're just sending it over. Uh, kind of like an onboarding experience for clients. Yeah, right? yeah, they can see everything that they might ask, and then the next step would be to to uh, to send them an early quotation based on on uh, the job uh, scope. If the job is not defined yet, so we need to talk more and understand what they want. Um, but but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm always trying to save time by by creating documents that will answer questions. Oh, same with the artist. I got like this artist agree- agreement, which I explain everything about the workflow and how we work and how we pay and uh, what we expect and what they should expect. So we kind of meet expectations. Are, are you cool with them putting the work in their portfolios? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. always, yeah. always. And I, I, if the client don't have a problem with that, yeah. and they don't have because it's on our agreement with the client. So yeah, always all the people are putting the, the stuff online. And I can say that I saw many, many collaboration that happened because of of uh, the collaboration in Yambo Studio. So many other 3D artists that worked uh, with me or with us did uh, stuff b- 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 by themselves. Yeah. I, I don't have what to do with it. I don't, I'm not mad, I'm not, I, I, it's fine. It, it's how, how things work and I, I'm used to it. And, and I think that one of the things that, that help us uh, enjoy what we're doing is that we tend to stay pretty small in terms of like, we don't have like a huge space with tons of employees that we need to take every job that comes to our, our legs. We're trying to, to pick the stuff that we feel. How many projects do you work on at the same time? Between two to six, I, okay. I think, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, right. sometimes a bit more if they're small, but I think it's always between two to, to okay. six, something right. like that, yeah. Cool. Dude, thank you. It's we're coming to the end of the show. Is there anything that you want to share, like something that you're excited for this year that you want to? I don't know. I, I, Where it, people it, it, should look you up besides the website that we'll put. You, yeah. you say you're working on a new website. Yeah, yeah, we, we, yeah. So, so we're working on a new website, which should be like very, very exciting because yeah. we're doing like. Uh, Are the, you going to do it with Webflow? <laughs> no, sorry. It, 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 okay. it will be based on WordPress because oh, WordPress. Yeah, yeah. Because well, the, the, the developer did the previous website doing okay. this one, and we had like a, good, a very good relationship. I thought you have to do it on Wix because they're your clients. <laughs> they, yeah, it's also force you. <laughs> it's also a good point, but uh, uh, okay. but I, yeah, I. I it, I, this website cool. is going to be also like a collaboration between uh, really talented people. So there is like nice. a guy from, from, from Turkey who uh, was doing the, all, some typography stuff and nice. there is developer Pedro and there is like a, a content guy from uh, called David Martin from, uh, from USA and, and hopefully it will be up in months, something like that. Nice. And, and, and we tend to be more active on Instagram this year as well because... Uh, Instagram there, there, is the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, then that's it. And, 
thanks so much for 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 coming by and dude i hope we have some more collaborations i'm yeah, really yeah, I'm really sure i'm really inspired by the, your whole model for collaboration with others i think i will try to go in that direction as well it's really oh, that's awesome. and seeing that work for you so well and creating such high quality work is really thank inspiring. you dude, thank you so thank you for sharing so much of your knowledge thanks so much dude good luck next it, year it was man. a pleasure talking to you bye 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 man